obviously in a real broadcasting situation, I'd be showing you video of a basketball court on the right side of the screen instead of video of me. Uh, but for this example, you can at least see how the video overlay looks over uh, video that's coming in from a camera source. I can also use the fade button to swap the inputs. Now remember that this is going to stay on the score table regardless because I've locked it to input one, but now this data that's coming from the scoreboard controller is also going to now go over to the live web stream, which I can use that during the timeouts, during halftime, other breaks between the games if I need to do that. Um, I can set that up so that we don't get burned by YouTube for having the copyrighted music that you can hear playing in the background in the arena, and then I'll get um, copyright notices against me and I'll lose all of my monetization, which would be bad. The other thing I could also do is I could add in that video file that we created earlier. Um, if I wanted to do pre-roll and post-roll video, here's one that I made earlier for a game earlier in the season, and we can load that over there and it'll start playing. So we can push that. Uh, this was from middle school feeder night rather than from the playoffs, but you get the idea um, that this would be running. Perhaps I start the, the live stream maybe a minute before the game actually starts um, and then let this run. And then we actually cut to the live camera, which I would then throw over here. Remember, even though neither one of these is actually showing the, sc the full screen stats, it's still locked onto input one. So this little guy over here is what's going to the external output, uh, which is completely oblivious to what's going on with the live stream.